The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five wise. The foolish ones were taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all of those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants, buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening. It is great to be back at St. Michael's. Um, I served with Father Jerry in Augusta, where I still live. Um, and um, I've been in Augusta for about seven years. I came to Augusta from the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. So I went to my very first mass there. And um, my wife and I were just visiting, and we sat in the back of the church. and. Um, when Mass was over, I walked up to Father Jerry. I didn't, didn't know him. He was just standing outside waiting for everybody to come out. And I said, hi, I'm you know, Tony Wagner. I'm a permanent deacon. I'm moving to Augusta. He said, where are you from? I said, Philadelphia. <laughs> you know, the rest is history. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, I found a friend in Augusta right off the bat. Um, but I've been to St. Michael's before uh, for the first couple of years Father Jerry was here. I was able to come down fairly frequently, and I love being here. This is just a, a wonderful faith community, and, and uh, Father Jerry, I very much appreciate you having me again and, and for the opportunity to retreat here for a few days. It's, it's definitely been a, a, a fair exchange, I hope. Um, you know, this week is the combina culmination of, you know, just a crazy year. At least it is for me. You know, with COVID um, and all that's meant. Um, I know in my family, you know, there, this year there's just been numerous milestones. Um, not all of them very positive, you know, because of COVID and isolation and separation and and then, of course, we've had this election, which has been so acrimonious. And then this week, you know, uh, it's just been it's been such a, a, a topsy turvy time. And as I was praying and preparing um, for the homily, um, it was really the the reading from the Book of Wisdom that that captured my attention. Um, in the reading, it says it uses it has uh, wisdom, divine wisdom being personified by a woman. And it says that she hastens to us. She anticipates our need. Um, and, and in that reading, it really captures one of the most important biblical revelations for each of us. One that um, I think it's you know, easy to lose sight on, but maybe after a year and after a week like the one we've just had, it's an important one to remember. And, you know, the theologians would say it this, day, this way. They would, they would talk about the primacy of grace. You know, our religion is a religion of revelation. God has revealed the truth to us, and God has revealed to us the primacy of grace. And, of course, you know, grace, you know, as we understand it in our Catholic tradition, it is that free and undeserved help that we get from God to respond to God's call. 
the free and undeserved help that we get from God to respond to God's call, to become children of God, and ultimately to become partakers in the divine nature itself. So what does this mean? You know, just simply stated, what does this mean? It means that God is seeking us. God is pursuing us. That sounds so simple, but it is so important. God is seeking us. I think a lot of times, many of us, we kind of, whether we do it consciously or unconsciously, we flip that. And we think of ourselves as seekers. And on a certain level, that, that's okay. But even for us to seek God is a gift from God. Because it's God's grace that implants that in our hearts and in our souls to want to know God, to want to know God more deeply. This idea of the primacy of grace and of God pursuing us first and foremost, you know, should have really important implications for our our spiritual lives. In John's gospel, John chapter 15, Jesus Jesus says something incredibly important. It is not you who seek I, but I who seek you. And so I think, you know, as we live through this especially tumultuous time that can be unsettling to us and can you know, cloud our minds and cloud our hearts. There's just negativity is thick in the air. It prompts us to ask ourselves about our view of God functionally. What is our view of God? And I think for many of us, you know, even after a lifetime of of being Catholic Christians, we can find ourselves being tempted into or following into looking at God as distant. You know, it's up to us on our own power to close the gap of that distance. We, we are tempted into that. We think of God as demanding. It is up to us on our own power to somehow meet the expectations of God. And neither of those things could be further from the truth. God is choosing us. God is pursuing us. God is implanting in our hearts and our souls whatever desire we have to do good and to know God. That in and of itself is a gift from God. It's all gift. We are sinners and we need a savior. We can't save ourselves. And of course, that's what Jesus did. God incarnate. He came to save us. He pursued us even unto the cross, even unto that terrible death that he was willing to endure, the life that is so strong that it defeats death. So I'm just going to close with something very simple, but I think very concrete in terms of us, you know, going back to the basics and, you know, back to the primacy of grace, God choosing us. This week, find time. Find time to just sit down and invite God in. Just very simply, invite God in. Think about what are the things that are clouding your mind? What are the things, and I'm preaching to myself here, okay? What are the things that are clouding your mind? What are the things that are clouding your heart? And then invite God in. God wants to be in. God, it's, it's, not us, it's not up to us to close the gap. 
God wants to be in. He is choosing us. He is pursuing us. But what are the things in our lives that are cluttering that up? And then invite God in. Of course, the way to do this is in prayer. Just simple prayer. Talking to God like you're talking to a friend, like you're talking to a lover. That's what God wants us to do. He doesn't want us to complicate it. He wants us to simplify it and invite him in. So, back to the basics, the primacy of grace. It is not you who choose I, but I who choose you. We've all been chosen.